Hands on with the iPhone XR and the Google Home Hub and building a do-yourself Spotify. Live from the Twitch studios from Petaluma, California, it's the new screensavers. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The new screensavers is brought to you by... Slide belts by Brig Taylor. High quality, comfortable ratchet belts that are easy to adjust. If you want a better belt, go to slidebelts.com slash twit and use the code twit for 20% off. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. looks strangely like uh, Lou Maresca, the host of uh, This Week in Enterprise. I couldn't possibly... Well, it is! My God! Hello, Lou. <laughs> Lou's just borrowing. He thinks this is a we work space. Of course, yeah. It's yeah. a drop-in. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. Lou's just borrowing it. Thank you, Lou, for doing the open. This is episode 180, recorded Saturday, October 27th, 2018. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Aaron Newcomb. Aaron, nice to see you. Yeah, I haven't been here. I think it's been... It, physically in the building, probably over a year. What? Uh, of course, I do Floss Weekly, yeah. uh, and I try to do that at least once a month. I try to make time for yeah. that. But work keeps me so busy that I just haven't been able to make it So, so it's, it's not that here. we haven't asked you. Oh, no, no. You've okay. asked. You've asked plenty We love times, having you on. And I always feel guilty saying no, but, uh, you know. Aaron's a great maker. Uh, he also runs his own maker space. That's so right. we're going to talk about that in yep. a little bit. And he's the author of this fine book that everybody's going to want to run out That's right. and buy 10 copies of. Linux for makers, share that with your uh, favorite maker using, I would guess, a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi. Raspberry. And I talk about other uh, single board computers as well, um, not just Raspberry Pi. But it's a great, this actually, nice. if you're going to buy one, a lot of times people ask me, I'm buying a Raspberry Pi for my whatever, son, grandson, whatever, what else should I buy? A book like this um, and uh, a couple other books on making and Raspberry Pi would be perfect to go along with it. This that way they've got something go, to, to go with it. And boy, yeah. I think a Raspberry Pi is a great yep. gift for a, a young person who wants to learn about computers. And this is especially good for someone that's not familiar with Linux. That's why I wrote the book, of course, nice. is to give them, you know, what's the file structure look like? How do I install software? Uh, things like that. How do I protect my system? And as I step through the book, there's places for you to try out whatever it is that I'm talking about. So. And, and uh, the default, uh, you, you can use different operating systems, sure. but the default for Raspberry Pi is Raspbian, which Raspbian, is Raspbian, which is a, a derivative Linux. of, of yeah. Debian. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. nice. Make uh, the O'Reilly folks put some money. This is in color. Yeah, color and lots <laughs> wow. of pictures. I tried to put as many pictures as possible I love because it. it's really hard to describe what's going yeah. on in a terminal window if you've never used one before. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, so good. That's great. Yeah. And I hear it's selling quite well. It's too. selling like hotcakes. Make so. Magazine, uh, make Linux for makers. There you go. Uh, we have a great show for you today. I have reviews, two reviews. I, I got the new iPhone XR. Came yesterday, and I've been out and about shooting photos and playing with it. Uh, whoop, and I just turned on the flashlight. <laughs> it's also very smart. I'll turn off the flashlight. I'll turn off the flashlight. Somehow sure I will turn off there the flashlight. There you go. Uh, we'll give you my review, and I'll tell you why. More, but Maybe more than just a, a, a budget iPhone. There's some mm. good reasons you might want to look at this one. Yeah. Not only that, but we got some questions coming up. We got some questions on makerspaces, uh, how to help detecting Wi-Fi problems, and uh, making your own DIY music streaming servers. We're going to so we'll make talk about that. Somebody's wife very happy. <laughs> uh, we're also uh, going to talk about this. This is the new Google Home Hub. It's been a busy day. The mail guys had a lot to do this week. Um, it's a Google Assistant, it's a smart home controller, and as you can see, it's a digital picture frame. My review coming up. Yep, and not only that, but Halloween's right around the corner. I don't know if you've decorated yet. Uh, yeah, we kind of have, but I, I like what you're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got some Philips, Philip Hue lights and a speaker, Megan Roney's going to be on in a little bit to tell you how to use an Android app to actually, uh, what did we say? Uh, creepify. <laughs> creepify your home. We actually, I have Hue lights throughout my office only. 
because my wife doesn't want them in the rest of the house. But I can make my office very scary now, thanks yeah, to Megan. It'll be a great. lot of fun. Let's get uh, started with the hot topics. There was some big news from the Copyright Office this week. And thanks to uh, the iFixit folks, Kyle Weens, Corey Doctorow, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation, a bunch of people who spent a lot of time mm -hmm. petitioning the Copyright Office uh, it, it, this is a big deal in the right to repair movement. I'm That's sure right. you're all over right to repair. Yeah, this has been going on for a long time, uh, especially with maker spaces, right? One of the things we do uh, frequently is we have take apart nights where we take a printer or whatever. We just want to take it apart, and it's a great way for kids to learn. Um, and also, it's great just to fix your own stuff. And there was kind of a movement going on with some vendors saying, look, if you violate, if you tear, take the top off, uh, you know, we could come back and sue you for copyright infringement. Um, and now with this decision, actually, um, it opens up the ability for people like me or really anybody to take apart your own stuff, see how it works, and hopefully fix it yourself. So this is a really good movement right here by the Copyright Office. This is a, a bunch, basically the right to petition for exemptions to the DMCA and the group mm -hmm. that uh, went there, including uh, Sorek, uh, convinced the uh, Librarian of Congress and the Copyright Office, the final ruling released this week, that you do have the right to repair. Now, here's, here's what's changed. You can now jailbreak Alexa-powered hardware and other gadgets. They call them voice assistant devices. That's huge. You mm -hmm. couldn't do that before because yeah. it has uh, copy protection built right. in. And the DMCA says you can't reverse engineer copy protection. Well, these are exemptions to that. You can unlock a brand new phone, not just used ones. That's important for recyclers that get unopened consumer returns. Uh, there's a general exemption for smartphone repair, home appliances, or home systems. So, for instance, Kyle Weens writes, it's finally legal to root and fix the Revolve smart home hubs that Google bricked when they shut down the servers. Remember that? They bought the company, and yeah. then you basically w took them out took of the business and took the servers down. Yeah. Uh, re repair of motorized land vehicles, including tractors, by modifying the software. This is huge. People who have John Deere tractors were thwarted by John Deere. Mm -hmm. You actually could not modify the tractor. That's right. You had to get it certified by the repair center. That's huge news. And it's now legal for third parties to report, re perform repair on behalf of the owner. So you, you can basically take a smartphone to a third party repair place. They cannot be prevented. However, you can't fix your Xbox One or your PS4 products that aren't in this category, smartphones, home appliances, or home systems, or motorized land vehicles are excluded. So for, I don't know why, but if you have a boat, you can't repair it, okay? Whatever that means. <laughs> and uh, I think this was a non-starter. The EFF and Bunny Wang did ask to bypass HDCP, the HDMI copy protection, and that was denied as well. I'm yeah. not surprised. I'm not surprised. I think they that threw one that one in and said, maybe yeah. they'll miss it. Yeah. But this is huge. This really is a big is. affirmation of the right to repair. I'm very yeah. pleased. I, hopefully they'll get a blanket statement on this. I mean, it's a little wonky to have all these onesie twosie types things where you can you can repair this, but you can't not repair that. your Xbox. Yeah. You know, hopefully at some point this will continue to progress and we'll be able to repair whatever we want. I we have bought. to commend uh, Motorola. They're the first smartphone company to actually release a do-it-yourself repair kit. They have That's little awesome. wedges and pries and stuff. That is fantastic. Yep. Uh, you Maybe you saw the New York Times article, and by the way, the president has denied this, but the New York Times had, had an article f saying that they had been briefed by White House staffers who were hoping that the article would change President Trump's habits. He has, <laughs> and Trump denies it, but anyway, he has three iPhones, two of which are modified to be secure mm -hmm. by the Secret Service or whoever it is that does this. I think it's the Secret Service. Uh, one of them, for instance, only has Wi-Fi. Um, doesn't have a phone in it at right. all. Right. But apparently the president also has his own personal iPhone and is wont to make those late night calls he makes to friends and family. The Times said it's because it's the only one of the three that he, he can have a contact list on. So it's easier for him to make the calls. And what this auth, uh, article asserted is that the Chinese and the Russians can listen in on these iPhone calls on this third stock mm -hmm. iPhone. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people were wondering, well, how are they able to do this? I thought the iPhone was secure. I thought cell conversations were secure. And it goes back, there's a great article in Wired Magazine that talks about this. It goes back to the radio software the, the baseband software in here, it's called SS7. This was hacked 
has been hacked for years. It mm. came out in 1975. Wow. And even though everybody knows it's hacked, and we've seen a lot of hacks around this, it hasn't been fixed. It's mm. a major process to fix this. Every phone has SS7 software in it. So that's problem one. Problem two is Washington, D.C. is littered with something called stingrays. You mm. know what a stingray no. is? stingray. These are things that law enforcement uses, uh, but is also used by spies and bad guys. They are... They pose as a cell site. Oh, oh I have they're, And they're portable. This. You can put right. it in a briefcase. They're small. Yeah. They pose as a cell site. And then you know that smartphones are promiscuous. As right. soon as they see a strong signal from a cell site, oh, there's four bars over here. They join that cell site. And as long as they get online and everything works, they're going to say, yeah, I'm connected. Well, that's a man in the middle attack. Right. All of your traffic is going through that stingray. Mm -hmm. And we know there are literally dozens of stingrays all over D.C., mm. at many of them near embassies. I'm guessing there's more than a few near the White House as well. Yeah. So anytime uh, anybody in the White House, not just the president, picks up a stock cell phone, there's the potential that that conversation can be monitored. <sighs> not a good thing. So he says, no, I, don't, I hardly ever use that phone. <laughs> hardly ever use that phone it's okay but you know honestly i can understand he's kind of an open book right he i is. think he feels like well so what if they're listening and everybody knows how i feel uh <laughs> it, it, you, you do remember back to the previous president obama complaining right because when he got in office they took away his blackberry and they gave him a windows ce device yeah. that was modified hacked had things hanging off of it to be secure uh he even complained i think to uh um i think it was to Jimmy Kimmel saying, I'm practically using a child's phone. Right, right. <laughs> they, won't let, they won't let me use a real phone. So he got it's it back, important. though, eventually, didn't he? Yeah. Half, after, halfway through his... Yeah, uh, they found it. They were uh, able to secure yeah, it a little bit yeah. better. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> you, boy, you take my cell him. phone away. Yeah, I, exactly. Like, I'm going to be peeved. Yeah, right? yeah. I can't imagine living with It's him. interesting how things have changed just in you know, the past eight years, right? Yeah, and we talk about this a lot, but I have yeah. to say, I watch all the time. Nobody's ever looking at anything anymore. Mm -hmm. You walk down the street, everybody's like this yep. constantly. Yep. And if they're not looking at it, they're holding it. Right. Now, I have a good excuse. I'm playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> but the rest of you, would you put your phone down? Finally, look at this painting. And, and let me tell you how much this painting sold for. This is a painting done by Artificial Intelligence... They uh, were trained it on the old masters. It's beautiful. <laughs> really? Beautiful. You think so? Yeah. It's kind of a schmeary face. Guy's got a white collar. It's dark. It looks a little Rembrandt-y. There's, you know, yeah. black. It looks like the AI couldn't quite finish it. They just sold it at Christie's Auction House for $432,500. Nearly half a million dollars. That's crazy. That's the new thing when you go to see modern art. Instead of saying my kid could do that, my AI could yeah, do that. Yeah, my AI could do that. No problem. <laughs> they should have shredded it after that when they got done. <laughs> that was cool. Banksy did yeah, that. Banksy. Somebody bought it and then they came after it. As soon as they bought it, sold. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> did they get their money back? I don't think so. What? No, I don't think so. All you get is an empty frame <clears throat> and a bunch of shred. And a shredded Banksy. <laughs> yep. Here's your shredded Banksy. <laughs> I figured this was bought by one of the you know ridiculously wealthy tech has entrepreneurs to be. like has a Larry Page or yeah. and and he just said, Well, I'll have the first AI and what's you know, to him, four hundred thirty two dollars is like twenty bucks to right, you. And right, me. yeah, yeah. Pennies. Pennies. Nothing. Hey, I gotta get that in my couch. Piece of history. Yeah. And it is, it's a piece of history. <laughs> Uh, Aaron, I'm so glad you're here. We've got some great questions for you. We're going to do a review of uh, a couple of things, but first, let's take uh, a look at my belt. <laughs> Ready? Woo! I'm wearing. Oh, look at that! It says Twit. Isn't that nice? That's my slide belt. Now I have to say, I stopped wearing belts for a while because they were uncomfortable. Mm, to a man is. of my girth, a belt is just an insult. And if, I, <laughs> and if I eat something, then it's like, because they have like four notches. The slide belt has a patented rat, ratchet technology. I just love it. That means I can make it almost any size I want. There's, I think, 32 different ratchets on here. I also love the sound. In the morning, when I put on my belt, I love that. <laughs> That's the slide belt ratchet technology. Slide belts from... 
Brig Taylor are high quality, comfortable ratchet belts, a variety of designs. I'm wearing a vegan leather, and you noticed it was it was monogrammed. This would be a great groom's gift if you've got a wedding coming up, a great uh, gift for Christmas as well. They don't have holes, just that patented 32 ratchet design. It makes it the most comfortable belt you've ever worn. I had a problem, I confess, in the old days. It's, a, it's an embarrassing problem. I almost don't want to admit it with pants falling down because the belt would just slide right off my yeah. narrow hips. Not yeah. anymore with a slide belt. Here's a, this, is a, this is a slide belt. I'll show you the actual mechanism. This is a brass buckle with a kind of navy canvas. Kind of makes mm. it look like a Cub Scout, right? I, I love yeah. that. So the way these come, it's great. Um, they fit anybody. They come to it. They have come very long, and then you can just cut them to the length you want. And then you insert it here, which is nice because you can easily change the belt with different buckles, which is fantastic. Let me insert it in the right place and then lock it down. And then here's the other side. This is the, the ratchet side on it. And that's what the ratchets look like. So they just slide right in and they make that great ratcheting sound. I'm really a fan of the slide belt. Let me show oh, you. Oh, oh, Aaron, wait till you see this. This is the this, Ooh, primo. This is the survival <laughs> survival belt from Slide Belt. Beautiful buckle here, and what? Okay, just looks like a regular belt buckle, right? Except for the knife, <laughs> <laughs> bottle opener, uh, flashlight. I mean, let me close the knife so I don't because it's yeah, it's careful. really sharp. Um, wait, this is like if you go out in the woods. Yeah, and then it's got a little flashlight. Look at that. Very bright LED light and a fire starter. This this is a fire starter. So you basically, you could wear this belt and nothing else and survive in the woods. That is, it's just awesome. This would be actually a great groom's gift. Uh, you could choose the material for the belt. Slide belt is just a great place with a huge selection of straps, full grain and top grain leathers. That's the one I have at home, of course, because nothing but the best for me, but also vegan leathers and canvas. You can wear them casually around the house, but they're just as dressy as can be for date night. And as I said, you can change the material any easily anytime. So it really makes it uh, great to be, uh, you know, have multiple belts with your buckle. And of course, a one-year warranty, free exchanges and no hassle returns. So if you give this as a gift and somebody doesn't want it, no problem. They can return it easily. A great gift option. Many options. By the way, not just men. They have narrow belts as well for women and kids. Unisex survival belts, colorful belts for kids, skinny belts for women, and coming soon, slide belt watches with swappable watch bands for ultimate customization. Also, before you check out, click on the deals tab. You'll find some great offers. Those sets, though, because they're already discounted, won't get our special twit offer. If you're ready for a better belt, this is the twit offer. Go to slidebelts.com slash twit and use the code twit at checkout. You'll get 20% off your order. Nice deal. Slidebelts.com slash twit. Use the offer code twit for 20% off. Slide belts by Brig Taylor. Brig, by the way, is the guy who does slide belts. Ah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I had him. Great We're going to check him out. Yeah. Oh, they're really nice. Yeah. Comfortable. See? Yep. And if I have a big meal tonight? I've got the same problem. I go to sit <laughs> of course down. Of you do. Like, oh, too tight. Too tight. Uh oh No, I made a little bit too tight, but it's okay because <laughs> it comes. Oh, whew. All right, I got the new iPhone uh, yesterday, so I guess you can't say this is a thorough multi-week review, mm. and I'll have that for you uh, later on, but I am blown away. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this. This is the iPhone XR. As you know, it comes in colors, six of them, uh, and, they're, and they're beautiful colors. There's black, there's white, there's coral, which is kind of pinky. There's a kind of a light blue, and this one, which I got, is product red. Now, the sad thing about this is these are now glass backs. That's so they support the Qi charging that all uh, iPhones now support, all the new iPhones support, with an aluminum colored band around it. I, the, the red I like is the aluminum. The red is beautiful. The aluminum is fine. It's stainless steel on the more expensive iPhone XS. But I think this is just fine. But aluminum is going to dent a little bit easier. Glass is going to break for sure. Too. And you see the fingerprints. It's really... <sighs> It's sad to me because they're making these absolutely gorgeous phones, and the first thing you're going to do is put it in the case. Right. Yep. There's just no way anyone's going to carry this around, and if they do, you, you better be awfully careful. What's good about this is the price. 
They start at $750. That's about a 250 bucks less bad. than the 10s Max. Uh, that's for a 64 gigabyte version. It's the only iPhone 10 RS that supports 128 gigs. That's 799 because the iPhone 10s and 10s Max jump right to 256. That's 899. So you see a big difference. In pricing, you're saving a couple of hundred bucks, but you're not giving up the internals. It still has the A12 Bionic, that amazing chip. And uh, by the way, as we learn more and more about the A12, we're just realizing this is basically a desk class, desktop class processor. Right. Beating, in some cases, the MacBook in terms of processing. Isn't that crazy? Performance. There's a lot of headroom, I guess. It has the same front cameras, the 7 megapixel true depth camera, does the portrait mode, does the uh, an emoji, mm -hmm. all the funny little things that iOS 12 does. The back camera is one of the sacrifices you're going to make. It is a single lens instead of the dual. It only has the wide-angle lens. Same 12 megapixel uh, rear wide-angle camera as in the 10s, the 10, 10s, and 10s. So what do you lose without the dual camera? You I don't mean, get the really... 2x optical zoom. Okay. Okay. You get you get digital zoom. Yeah. And Apple does they say use that second lens for some of the camera computational photography that right. they do. Right. But you still get portrait mode, and yeah. it looks to me just as good. Uh, still does great at night. I took a lot of pictures uh, last night. We went to a haunted house. Yeah, and that's the Achilles heel of these all cell phone cameras. Really, is how well they do in low light. But they're getting so they're getting a lot much better. better. This is a dual SIM model, uh, wireless charging, as I mentioned, just like the big boys. What's interesting is the size. So this is bigger than the iPhone 8, but smaller than the 8 Plus. It's bigger than the iPhone 10, but smaller than the 10s Max. Mm. So. I think for a lot of people, this is at a kind of a midpoint that is a good size. A lot of people complain about the 10s Max that it's just a little too big. It's a 6.1 inch screen, 326 pixels per inch, which in my opinion is more than enough. I mean, remember when we got all excited because laser printers finally did 300 oh, yeah. DPI? This is more than that. <laughs> Everything's really crisp. And there's the other sacrifice you're going to make. This is not the OLED screen of the mm. iPhone 10 and 10s. Yeah. This is an LCD screen. But folks, so was every iPhone before the exactly. iPhone 10. It's a very good LCD screen. And I'll tell you, when I put it side by side with my 10s Max, it's, it's not worse. <laughs> it's fine. It's a great screen. Some people complain about the bezels. You see that it's not... I was not, just going to mention that. Yeah. It's not completely edge to... Oh, sorry, Siri. I didn't mean to trigger you. It's not, you can't see it when it's black, but it's not completely edge to edge. But uh, that doesn't bother me. Here, let me, uh, let me get Anthony's... 10s, and we can we can show. Well, yours is very pretty. I like that yeah, picture. I know. <laughs> wow, that's purple. But uh, size-wise, you can see just a little bit smaller, not much, but it's a little easier to hold. And I think people will like it for that reason. It is a 1400 to one contrast ratio. That's very good for that's LCD, really good. but not nearly what OLED will do. Yeah, they call it the most advanced LCD ever, the liquid retina. You know, Apple's good at those numbers and names and so forth. Uh, I think this is fine. One of the things they have done with this, iFix it tells us, is put a pretty big battery in it. The only oh, battery that's, that's bigger from Apple is the 10s Max. Mm -hmm. So battery life with this LCD screen, the lower pixel density, uh, and the big battery is going to yeah. be very good. In fact, that's been my experience. It's a great Pokemon Go device. You can play for hours and hours. Uh, they say one and a half more hours of battery life than the 8 Plus. Apple's wow. usually pretty good in their battery estimates. So that's, that's the best claimed battery life of any iPhone ever, according to Apple. Video playback compared to the 10R, uh, uh, the 10R compared to the 10S, 16 hours on the 10R, 14 hours on the 10S, 15 hours on the 10S Max. So given the bigger battery and the you know less um, power hungry screen, this is the battery life champion in the iPhone lineup. Yep. That's and, another reason to look at it. And that's why my wife would love that, right? I mean, she doesn't need the biggest, the sharpest, the, yeah, the most Yeah, and if you pixels. have smaller hands, this she is a better size. A yep. This is a really good replacement for anybody who's with an older iPhone, right. a pre-iPhone 10. They're going to say, wow, this is so great. It does use all the iPhone 10, you know, face ID and mm -hmm. the swipes and everything like that. It's the new modern platform. It's a little less water resistant than the 10s. It's IP67 instead of IP68 you should probably not drop any iPhone in water. Right. I know they say it could survive at a meter depth for three yeah. hours. Don't do it. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, it's mostly splash proof. You can take it out in the rain. If it falls out of your pocket into the toilet, it's going to survive. Um, I am very, very happy with this. And I think given the $750 price point, still not cheap. 
I mean, there are Android phones, very good, very competent, mm -hmm. maybe even almost as competent Android phones for half that price. But if you want an iPhone, seven ninety uh, seven forty nine is a great price. Get the sixty four gig. I find that's plenty of room, mm -hmm. and I have lots of music and books on here, and take a lot of photos. You'll probably be using the iPhoto uh, Cloud library, and that takes the photos right off right. the phone. I'm, I think this is the iPhone. I think this is going to be the iPhone this year for this year that people will really want. <laughs> I think you're right. Save a little bit of money. So there's the iPhone XR. I'm happy to carry it around, to be honest with you. Uh, I used it every all day uh, yesterday. I've been using the XS Max, and I didn't feel in any way constrained. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was just as good. Maybe if you're a real photo buff, you'll want that 2X optical zoom. Yep. Maybe if you're really an OLED fan, you'll want the OLED screen. But, boy, for better battery life and a, and a couple hundred bucks off, this is a great choice. The iPhone 10R comes in six colors. All right, we're going to answer a uh, call for help in just a little bit. You're yeah. going to show somebody how to do a DIY Spotify. What? Fun stuff. Fun stuff. And I'm going to review this puppy here. It's been showing all my family photos for the last couple of hours. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage. If it's time to take your family to a new house or refinance your existing home, I want to send you to the best lender in the country. They're the biggest now, too. They kind of go hand in hand. Quicken Loans. For the last eight years in a row, Quicken Loans has been number one in customer satisfaction, according to J.D. Power. Eight years in a row. As of last December, they finally beat that big bank, you know, the one with the whips and the stagecoach. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they are number one, and there's good reason. For instance, they're very customer-focused. They created, and we've talked about this before, Rocket Mortgage, an entirely online mortgage approval process that simplifies it. You don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to get a big stack of paperwork to take home and go through old boxes of, you know, bank statements and pay stubs. You don't have to do any of that. You just go online to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS, answer a few simple questions, pick the, they'll tell you which loans you qualify for. You pick the term, the down payment, the rate, and then within about 10 minutes, you're pre-qualified. That's called pre-qualified approval, but it's just the first step. Next step, Within 24 hours, they'll verify income, assets, and credit. And then you get that big green button on there that says verified approval. And you can even print out a letter to bring to your realtor or better yet, the seller that says they're good for it. They got the money. They got the loan. Suddenly, you have the strength of a cash buyer. You move right to the front of the line. So if you're bidding on a house and there's four other bidders and you're the one with that letter, you're golden. But here comes step three. And this is something new because rates are going up now. You might have noticed that the Fed has started to raise the uh, federal interest rate. And that means LIBOR is going up and these other index rates. That means there's always the potential as you're house hunting, the interest rates are going to go up. And that means on a 30-year loan, that could be tens of thousands more dollars. That's a big deal. It puts pressure on you. You got to look at a house and you say, honey, we got to take, it's not perfect, but we got to take this house because the rates are going up. It's going to cost us more. You don't want that anxiety. Rocket Mortgage takes the anxiety out of it with their new rate shield approval exclusive to Rocket Mortgage. They're going to lock your rate up for up to 90 days while you shop. That means that once you get that loan, once you do that third step, the rate shield approval, your rate cannot go up. It could go down if the rates go down, but if the rates go up, your rate is locked. You have up to 90 days now to look for a house with no pressure. That is a big deal. That's why they're number one. They think about customer experience. It's exactly what you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. You do this. Go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Sign up today. Get that account going. It'll be a lot faster when the time comes and you want to get that loan. Now, let me give you some legalese. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, and MLSConsumerAccess.org number 3030. We're talking rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Let me thank them for their support and make it possible to do the new screensavers. You ready yeah. to take a call for I'm ready. You feel good? Let's do it! Call for help time. We go to Okalala, Florida. James is on the line. Hello, James. Hey, Leo. How are you doing today? I am well. Do you work for uh, Wayland Utani Corporation? You work for them? Uh, we do. We terraform planets. We've got some nice property on LV 426. <laughs> if you want to buy something. 
Yeah, it, it gets noisy at night, but besides that, it's fairly quiet. <laughs> That's a great answer. Great and, answer. And, and be careful of the beasts that roam at yes. night. Yes. Well, they mostly come at night. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. mostly. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you, James. What can we do for you? <laughs> so I've got a sizable music collection. Uh, we keep it on our home server, and we'd like to access it from our Apple and our Android devices. So if we could do it outside the home network, that'd be great. It's not really necessary, but it'd be nice to have. Um, I've got some extra computers, some extra Raspberry Pis laying around. So if I could incorporate them, if that was necessary, I could do that. Uh, up till now, what we've been doing was loading our music onto Google Play Music, but apparently they're going to shut that down and roll that into what? YouTube Music. What? That's what I've heard. Oh, man. So I don't know what that's going to do to that. That's kind of why we want to be able to access our own stuff without having to re rely on Google Music if it's not. I necessary. loved that. I, I uploaded Google all my music, music to yeah. Google. I actually did it with Amazon, too, and they have my whole collection and it streams everywhere. Oh, that'll mm -hmm. be a bummer. But you're right. The Google, you never know when they're going to shut stuff right. down. Yeah, I, well, I heard, heard they're that, just actually. moving it to YouTube. So it's still going to have the same service. They're just putting it under YouTube music now. Okay. I haven't heard that rumor. So. I hope they don't because I've actually done the same thing. So I've got all my MP3s that I've, you know, uh, 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 ripped in over the years from the music that I've that I've got, my CD collection, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've uploaded all of Come that on, to Google Music. Say the Napster word. You can I, say I, it. I, I don't What's Napster? <laughs> Napster? What? Bear share? I mean, uh, what? I, uh, I don't know what that God. is. I, I have like 80 <laughs> gigs of music that I downloaded back in the day. Yeah, we all did that. But I've paid for it since. That's right. Many With times over, Blood, actually. sweat, and tears. Yeah. <laughs> I keep buying Beatles music. That's right. No, but so I do the exact same thing. I hope Google Music doesn't go away. I need to go back and validate that. But I've done the exact same thing. That's the first suggestion, actually, is to keep it in Google Music. Or, or use Amazon. Amazon. Does it? Or, I, I, there or are limits Apple. on how many songs. Apple's iTunes match. Actually, that's what I did to sanitize mm -hmm. my Napster music, mm -hmm. which was if you have anything over 90, 96 kilobits per second, yeah. uh, it will upload it and then download, then delete it. I did the same thing. Yeah, move it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Don't delete it completely, but move it somewhere else and then say, okay, I want to download all my music. And suddenly it's 256 kilobit AAC. Right. And there's no, and there's no copy protection. Right. It denapsterizes yeah. it. Yeah. And that saves them money because they don't have to upload your file. All they have to do is match it with the one that they right. already have. Right. So. But I like also the idea. And in fact, I have a big Synology NAS. Mm -hmm. I like the idea. I'm with you, James, of having your own storage, your, your own place to keep your stuff. Right, right. So how can you do that? So you mentioned you have a Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah, so Raspberry Pi, you should definitely check out the music player daemon if you haven't already. Um, there are okay. lots of front ends for it, but that serves as a back end. Um, so you use the music play player daemon as your back end. You connect to your Synology or whatever your ser whatever server you have, um, and okay. you can stream that to your phone, to your computer, to your whatever. Now, granted, that's going to be inside the house. It's not going to cover you outside the house, unfortunately. But you could set up an external link to that box from the outside and let you do the same thing. Might hurt your bandwidth uh, a little bit okay. there if you're trying to do it outside, but you should definitely check out MPD. The other nice thing about MPD is you can use it for so many other projects. Um, so, for example, I use that to when I built my turned my old time radio, my 1942 Philco radio, uh, and put a Raspberry Pi in that. I used uh, MPD and the MPC front end client. Um, to, because then you can actually get in there and program and make it do all sorts of stuff, react to buttons or do all kinds of things. Um, I've got several people in the uh, uh, in our makerspace that have done something similar to this, actually using Raspberry Pi Zero, a little Bluetooth board, and they 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 make up all sorts of portable players that can t they can take their music basically anywhere at that point. Um, okay. So that's the first recommendation I have. Or I guess the server second. Does this support? It looks like all. all does it it should be... run on any any Linux system. But I mean, uh, that you might does have. he have to use? So on his NAS, does he have to turn on oh. the Windows Music Server? No, or? no. On the NAS, you don't. So what will happen is the MPD will run on your Raspberry Pi, yeah. and that will link back to whatever server you have, whether it's a Windows Server okay. or a Linux Server. So it doesn't and matter. Stream the, okay. It doesn't matter, and it'll stream the files from that server for you. Okay. Okay. Plex would do that too. And Plex is not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, Cody. Um, is another idea, but those are both of those platforms are a little bit more built for what, video. What, who's nasty? For video, yeah. Who's nasty? I'm sorry, what now? Who's nasty? Oh, it's just it's just a PC that I shared out oh, okay. so, uh, files on. It wasn't like it's not an actual Windows Server PC. It actually but makes it I easier. Just, it makes it a lot it easier. Is. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. I did that because it was just so simple. So. Yeah. Right. All you have to do is put in the credentials to connect to that share on your network, okay. and then stream everything that way. Synology, okay. the reason I asked is Synology does have this thing they call music, audio station. I haven't tried it yet. I'm mm. thinking of setting it up on my uh, Synology NAS. But I don't think, the real one is the iPhone out yeah, and about, that's right? right? 
Uh, and the other problem with doing that is your upstream bandwidth is not what you think it is, right? Yep, we right. all focus on the big number that yep. the, the ISP gives you, the 20 megabits or the 100 megabits, but your upstream is usually four or five. And you don't want to saturate that by sending music out yeah. because everything else will stop working. So, yeah, maybe not serving it to the internet. If you want to do that, then Google Around Music. Around the house is one thing. On the internet, yeah. Google Music, iTunes, uh, yeah, yeah, she mostly yeah. Amazon. the stuff inside the house, so right. that's, that's fine. Yep. It's funny how it's gotten so hard, just parenthetically, to put your music on iPhones. Yeah. You have to really work. The Apple <laughs> really wants you to stream it. I don't know why. I guess because they want you to subscribe to Apple Music. Sure. But if you have a music collection now, I feel like we're kind of second-class citizens. If you have a bunch of MP3s, yeah. you want to... We're just, that's not how the world's working anymore. They nope. want you to subscribe monthly and just play it from their servers. Yep. And for the most part, I'm okay with that, right? It makes my it's life convenient. a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, but I've still got all those files just like you do. So I want to keep yeah. them around just in case. You never know what's going to happen. I'm crossing <laughs> my fingers that moving to YouTube, you know, becoming, it's just, I think it's just a name change, James. I'm hoping. I, th I think it is. I think so, too. I think all the service, at least I haven't heard anything that they're going to be taking away, you know, the yeah. interface or the fact that you can upload music or anything like that. Um, so. James, when you're not terraforming planets, what do you do? <laughs> oh, I'm a student right now. I'm getting my uh, MIS degree. Awesome! Nice. Yes. You're going to be in management information sciences. Yes, I met you in Gainesville at the IT Pro TV launch. Oh, wow. Did we dance together? No, we did not dance together. <laughs> My wife would be jealous. She doesn't tolerate that. Lisa and I are dancing, and they're, and then I'm looking around, and everybody's staring. No one else is dancing. They had great music, though, didn't they, James? They did. It was they a did. lot of fun. Well, it's good to yeah. see you again. Thank you very much. Good luck in your career. Okay, thank you. All right, All right. Some, great, you, some great tips. It's All always right. nice to have, have you uh, here. Uh, to help us with the maker Something stuff. a little different. He mentioned he wasn't afraid of the Raspberry Pi, so give Do a shot. not fear the Pi. That's right. I love the Raspberry Pi. And you know what? I have several, and I'm always looking for things to do. Yeah. You've got some great ideas. You're always yeah. good on this stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, Patrick Norton, speaking of uh, makers, he'll be here next week. If you have a tech question for me or Patrick, here's how you get on the show. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Oh, I'm so excited. I got my invitation to the big Apple event on Tuesday. <laughs> you know, they told me that everybody get a di gets a different Apple logo done by a, a different artist. And, yes. And they're all unique. Actually, that one was done by AI. Uh, AI did this. <laughs> You're invited to talk about our stuff. Wait a minute, Apple LLC? That's that's not the same Apple I know. <laughs> Aren't they a corporation now? Oh. And I got all excited for nothing. We will be streaming our live coverage of the Apple event. I'm getting up early because it's 10 a.m. in Brooklyn, 7 a.m. here in California. Oof. Megan Maroney and I will get on the air at 7 in the morning on Tuesday. It's worth it. It's always exciting when there's an Apple event. Uh, we know, we're pretty sure we know there'll be new iPad Pros, 10 and a half or bigger, 12.9. The rumor is that the 10 and a half will be more like an 11 because they're going to get rid of the bezels mm. and that they're going to take the 12.9, keep the screen the same size and shrink the physical because yep. it's it was kind of big. That makes sense. Yeah. New pencil, be Bluetooth instead of whatever weird technology they were using before. Uh, maybe Type-C charging on these devices. That would be a real live That opener. would be great. And what the other thing we're kind of waiting for and hoping for and crossing our fingers for is, is updated MacBooks. Mm. Maybe a new MacBook Air, a sub $1,000 MacBook Air. Cross your fingers, right, with a retina display. Uh, and new Mac Minis. My God, we haven't seen a new Mac Mini in more than four years. Wow. That would be, that's another good device, though, for Absolutely. people who want to build their own thing like yeah. uh, servers and so forth. Yep. People use them all the time. Now, Google had an event a couple of weeks ago, and they announced, of course, the Pixel 3. Got my Pixel 3. And this, this is the Google Home Hub. And it is uh, surprisingly low, $149. Maybe not so surprising when you realize that... This is pretty tiny. It wasn't it easy small. to tell on the web or on the on the uh, event, but let me just show you. This is my Pixel 3 phone. It's basically a 7-inch tablet uh, with a 6-inch screen on there. It is a good screen, right? You looked yeah, at it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, the I don't know what the official viewing angle is, but I mean, I could see it from, you know, just right here. It's not so. super high res, 1024 yeah. by 600, so it's not even HD. 
but it is a good enough screen to be a photo frame. And I tell you, because it's tied to Google Photos, I'm really liking this as a photo frame. With I could show you how you set it up here on my uh, Pixel 3. I'll launch the Google uh, Home app. That's how you set it up. And with Google Photos, you can use, you can't, you asked me if you could use a search term, a and search, I wish you yeah. could, like, I want holiday photos. Right. But you can select, and this is kind of fun, family and friends. So these are all the face recognitions Google Photo has done. I think you're on here, Aaron. So if I wanted to make the slideshow just be pictures of Aaron Newcomb or that statue, <laughs> uh, uh, I could do that. And so that's kind of cool. I, what I did is I, I said, well, m maybe I'll, I'll, do, uh, I'll do my wife, I'll do my son, my daughter, her son, and me, I included myself in that. And by doing that, I'm now only going to see pictures of us. Mm -hmm. If you have been using Google Photos over the years, as I have, I have like every picture, every digital picture I've ever taken going back to me 2001 too. in yep. Google Photos. That means it's going to be digging through these and pulling up albums. You can also select recent highlights, which I did. And that way, I'm going to get pictures on here that I haven't seen in ages, pictures I just took recently. And I just love it. I have it set for 10 seconds, but you can make it much slower. I just turn it up so that And I love that you can, uh, that looks very familiar. That's I love that you can uh, go in and set it up for just albums, too. So if you had a recent vacation, for example. Yeah, this is from our trip to Malta. Got all your pictures Malta. in your so, album. Yeah, you pick exactly. that album and bing, bang, boom. You can also PC. turn on uh, the clock, as you can see, and the temperature. And it is a Google Assistant with actually surprisingly uh, good sound. Let me let me let me try this. Okay. And by the way, if you've got a Google Assistant, <laughs> just cover its ears yeah, right now. That's right. Google, listen to Twit podcast. All right. Here's where you stopped in this week in Tech MP3 Twit 689. Nobody expects the Scooter Inquisition. That was pretty quick. Yes. And it remembers that we were listening to this. Before. It remembers where we left yeah. off. Which is really good. I think even the echo doesn't do that. And I think the music is pretty good. It's very, it's loud. It's coming out of the speakers on the back here, which are fabric covered. You can also set this up. In fact, let me pause this so we don't have to listen to it. You can also set this up to go to any speaker automatically. So if you have a Bluetooth speaker that's paired to it or on your network, you could say, Whenever I ask for something on my home hub, yeah. would you play that through the Bose speakers? Right. That's brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. That means you've now just very simply set up voice control for any speaker system in your house, as long as those speakers are also on the network. There's a lot of nice features built into this. Notice it immediately sees um, the, the podcast I'm listening to, and I can turn the volume up and down here. Uh, it gives you a lot. It's, you know, it's Google Assistant. I can say, Google... What's the weather like today? By the way, notice the phone responded as well as this. Cloudy, with a forecasted high of 78 and a low of Having a display on these things, I think, is really great. Now, you can do this with your Google Cast, right? Yeah, you can do it with the Chromecast. Yeah. But, so, but you know, the thing about this is you were, just, you were just showing the app, right? So what, 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 here's what would happen to me. I would see a recipe, for example, on my Chromecast. <laughs> yeah. And I would be like, oh, I want to make that tonight, right? And, but there was no way for me to get the information. I'd have to pull right. out my phone, go into the app like you just did, hit the thing. This, this has it all right there. You can just click on it and go. It's a little small, as you pointed out, for cooking in the it kitchen. Is. It's yeah. a tiny screen. I think it's really <clears throat> kind of more aimed at a bedside table, a bathroom, a closet. Somewhere where idea. you're a little, maybe, I, I think it's just the right size for my desk. Yep. And I love having photo frame on my desk so I can see these pictures. I love how they come up. It has an ambient light sensor, not a camera. So where the camera would be, it's just this sensor, and if, if it gets dark in the room, I have actually had trouble triggering this in here. Maybe it's just so bright. But, uh, but we tried it at home. It, you can say what's going to happen. Will the screen go off when ah. it gets dark, Does or like will you mode? have a very low-light ah, nice. clock? So you can choose what's going to happen mm. with the ambient light sensor. I like that. It's really, that's why I think it's really designed more for your bedside table I think so too. than anything else. Yep. Uh, they say that Google eliminated the camera because they wanted to make the bill of materials small enough they could charge $149. That may be true, but I think also this is a nice thing because if you're going to put it in your bedroom, like the Amazon Spot has a camera. Yeah. The, uh, the Amazon Echo Show has a camera. The Facebook portal has a camera. Yep. Maybe you don't want to have a camera yeah. in an intimate place in your house. Yep. It's nice that this doesn't. There's just no camera at all. It's really for uh, a viewing device. You can watch videos, Google. Watch YouTube. Uh, but it's right. a... Playing recommended YouTube video. By the way, there's my calendar, the weather report for today. 
And then here, this video is a Navy SEAL commander explains why they wake up at 4 a.m. I don't, I don't know why it's playing that one, but you can see the sound is the really sound good. Sound is great. Yeah, and and it, it, it while it's small. Oh, it's Casey Neistat. So while it's small, I think it's pretty cool that uh, you can watch uh, video on it. Always remember the, that kids will also have access to this, and they don't have great parental controls, right. alas, for YouTube. So your kids might be able to watch YouTube videos you don't want them to see. Yeah. Uh, that's always something to be remembered. It'll make calls as well, right? Audio calls. It'll right? make duo Perfectly. calls. Duo calls. Yeah. yeah. But they're so audio that's, only. That's Google's uh, video calling, but for some reason it's, well, there's no camera. That's yeah, why. there's no camera. <laughs> Duh. But you will see picture mm -hmm. of the other person. It also has, and I think this is really important, a physical switch to turn off. The mic's off voice recognition. Yeah. Yep. So if I just want to use it as a photo frame and not have it listen to what I'm up to, uh, I can just have it there. And I think that's interesting that Google has become so privacy focused. Yeah. And, and they've put it... that in since the original Google Home. Yeah. Because uh, I've got one of those. Yeah, and they I had that it. privacy button. Yeah. It's I great. It's important. My wife does that because the, you know, the kids kind of go nuts sometimes with it. She's like, okay, that's enough. Hit the mute button. Now, remember, this isn't the only Google Assistant with a screen. Mm -hmm. There are other companies. We've seen the Lenovo. They have a bigger screen, a 10 and a half inch screen. Uh, JBL makes them. Uh, LG makes one. This one is a little different. Google makes an, a version of Android for those devices. This Google decided to do Google Cast. Yeah. So it is more like your it's more like the Chromecast. Chromecast. The other version is Android Things, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Android Things. I that's, guess what that's what the other guys run on. You can listen to YouTube music. You can play Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. I like the live albums. I can try this. Let's see. Google. Oh, I turned off the microphone. <laughs> Gotcha. Mic's gotcha. Back on. Google, show pictures from Japan. I don't. Maybe I should have said show my pictures. Show from Japan. your photos. Oh no, oh, it, no, it is. Figured it out. So these are pictures. There's Mount Fuji. Beautiful. These are pictures I took in Japan. Don't you think that's a nice feature? I like that. Yeah. You could, I guess, do that with your Chromecast as well. You can. But, but I just, I feel like this is the best photo frame ever made with some additional uh, features. The JBL Link View is eight inches. That's $199. The 10-inch uh, Lenovo Smart Display is 250. It's 100 bucks, bucks more. Uh, the Echo Show, if you want to get Amazon's, that's a 10-inch screen. That's $230. So they really are trying to hit the low price point. Yep. I tell you, I feel like I want to buy a bunch of these. I think these. I think they're going to go lower around Christmas time, yes. holiday time, or too. Black, Black so Friday. So if it's a little too much for you, just right. wait a few months. Oh. Black Friday is coming up because there's already been some deals floating around. Right. Like Home Depot, I think had it for 100 bucks. 100 bucks. I mean, so at that price, I think this is a really that's great an product. easy buy. Yeah. In fact, this is one device that my son, actually, my 13 year old son, wants to put in his in his room, and he doesn't usually get excited about these things, but he's been seeing ads for this, and he's like, Dad, can I buy that with my own money? I'll buy it with my it's own. It's not money. expensive. He's really excited. And if uh, kids like watching YouTube yeah. all the time, this yeah. is this is a kind of like a little mini, and I mean exactly. mini, uh, TV. Yep. So big it'll hold two sumo wrestlers <laughs> fighting. I'm sorry about that, kids. Don't, <laughs> don't don't look at the sumo wrestlers. Blur that out later. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very happy with it. I can find nothing uh, wrong with this. It has all of the Google. Home uh, assistant features that you would expect, the voice activation, everything but the camera. And as you said, you can make audio calls out and see the video in. You can also, by the way, use it as a, a smart home hub right. with the Google routines that you can set up. So you yep. can say, in fact, I think I mine will do a little bit. Google, good morning. Hi, Leo. I'm sorry, but I can't take your phone off silent from this device. That's part of my routine. Ah. So it won't it talk to my phone. PM. Currently in Petaluma, it's 75. That's cool. I think the birds are a nice <laughs> touch. That's awesome. Today, it will be partly cloudy with a forecasted... And this is going to play some of my morning podcasts and stuff. Right. So I do have a routine that says, you know, un if my phone's been on silent, I'm, um, I'm awake. So, so turn it on. It shows me my calendar. Google, stop. So I think this is, a, I'm very happy with this. I think at, the, at this price, it's good. It'll be really great if you get it at the reduced price. And I am, at, you're absolutely right, Aaron. Yeah. Black Friday, the holidays, you'll be able to see this at 100 I think bucks so. or less. I even. think so. So tell your son to wait. Yep. Uh, coming up, we're going to answer more of your tech questions. But first, we had some fun on iOS today. We're getting ready for Halloween. You have a costume? Uh, not this year.
No? No, not this year. Are your kids going out trick-or-treating? Oh, yeah. My daughter has a, uh, a whole thing. She's making a, a dandelion, you know, when it, when it has the white stuff that you blow off. And so she's got like a hundred little sticks with little decorations on them. Aww. And she's going as a dandelion. Isn't yeah, that's that great. sweet? Yeah, it's going to be a lot cute. of fun. She's very uh, creative. We thought it'd be kind of fun to show what you can do with Hue Lights to spookify your house. <laughs> Here's Megan on iOS today. Can I show you the Hue Haunted House app? When oh, I make yeah. things. This is um, here. It is They're on smart. my Ooh. iPad. So Even the app is creepy. This is not Demon just Dollhouse. lights, but also sounds. What do you want? Demon Dollhouse, Grizzly Graveyard, Abandoned Fairgrounds, Creepy <sighs> Cave, Lurid Laboratory. Well, I imagine uh, that uh, the uh, geez, Louise Haunted House would have the most spectacular sound effects. Right? Okay, so let's listen to that a little All bit. Right. Can you? I hear a heartbeat. Oh, and there's people. And the lights there's changed color. There's ghosts. So my lights Did changed, our lights change color? Oh, yeah, lights look, they got red. The lights color Blood according red. to... Um, and Actually, this is good. Yeah. This is terrifying. It is, isn't it? So Hugh, this is actually an interesting thing. Philips makes extra money on Hugh by charging for these extra mm -hmm. apps. They don't mm -hmm. give these apps yeah, away. Yeah, this is one ninety nine. dollars That's, that's it's reasonable. It's a pretty good one. Uh, I might get this for my... Because uh, I have a Hewlett office... This is Demon Dollhouse. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to play with this at the uh, at the house. The reason I chose this one over the other millions and millions of apps um, is that it doesn't charge for each scene. Like a lot of times, they'll let you in, and then it'll yeah. be like, oh, that's ninety nine cents, and that's ninety nine yeah. cents. This is a dollar ninety nine, and you get all, all of you these. Get all of them. This one, frightening pursuit. It's pretty terrifying too. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Somebody stole her face. <laughs> She's probably running to capture them and get it back. So you set this, put it, uh, airplay it to your HomePod or your speakers, and just then your lights will change, and um, it's it's great. I uh, really like These are this. really good. I can't wait to get this. You can set it on a sleep timer, so, you know, it'll oh, go yeah. off at no, night. No, okay. Starting tonight. This will keep the kids out of my office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, exactly. Man. It's it's good oh, for decorating man. and also keeping kids out of your office. Oh, I can't wait to play with this. You so, do you assign different house. assign different colors to the lights, or you could? It, um, I mean, you can do it, does it the lights manually. Yeah, it does it according okay. to so, like you know, for example, Hellfire turns them all red, obviously, um, and yeah, yeah. So, ooh, yeah. but see, yeah, ooh. I think that one stopped because you were were you adjusting oh, it on the back? I or? pressed the buttons. Yeah, you can now also do it Hellfire. manually. You can do it manually if you want to. Um, and this little string light also from Hue is also matched up. So it's changing color as well. So, um, yeah. That's yeah, so, so Hue Haunted House. I like these LEDs. I didn't know Hue made these uh, LED yeah, strips. Yeah, they're, they're pretty new. So you can hang those up on your house. and. Oh, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Maybe All I'll right. put this around the door to the office to further terrify the children. <laughs> All this right. This is so where the, the candy's kept. Come on in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the Hugo is fifty dollars. Not cheap, but not crazy. Um, yeah, it's a little pricey. Yeah. And then the Hue, you can get two Hue lights and the new hub for a hundred dollars. I kicked myself because on Sunday, for just one day, Amazon had a deal on its uh, Echo enabled lights, ten dollars oh. a bulb, and I was thinking. Why didn't I notice that? I didn't see it till Monday because I would have bought, uh, you know. So it's just Amazon Basics or something? Uh, there, there's a brand that I can't remember what the brand was. I didn't recognize the brand, but uh, yeah, that was a good oh, deal. $10 a bulb. So is keep your deal? eye peeled. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that again before Halloween. Yeah. yeah. So Hue, of course, requires a bridge. Um, you can use uh, if you have an Echo uh, Plus. That would also work. So, okay, so you don't have to have a specific Hue bridge. You could use the Echo Plus as a bridge. Yes, okay, you good. can. That's good to know. But really nothing else. Nothing um, else? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can, yeah, I think even if you use it with HomeKit, you still need the bridge. These are quite an investment. That's the, the yeah. downside mm -hmm. to the to the Hue mm -hmm. bulbs. And now that LEDs, uh, light bulbs are getting cheaper and cheaper, I, I'd like to see some more. Now, I don't know, for instance, if those Amazon bulbs, they may just be white on and off bulbs. That's yeah, just probably why they're might, $10, yeah. right? Because yeah. these are... RGB, they have three LEDs in them, mm -hmm. red, green, and blue, so they can make any color mm -hmm. at all. Boy, I love that show.
<laughs> iOS Today, every Tuesday on the Twitter Network. Now, you have yeah. a last-minute Halloween. Well, I was just going to say, I noticed the, the resin skull there that was on the desk during yes, the Yes, Father Robert printed that out so, for us. Oh, wow, even better. So uh, <laughs> I'm really impressed now. So actually, what I was going to recommend uh, is there's a great Instructable. Uh, you can just Google search Instructable Skulls. I'm sure it'll come, I'm sure it'll come up. You can, you can go Other get things a, may come up, but close those tabs. Here's, yeah. here's what you do. Yeah, yeah. Here's what you do. Go get a, a resin skull from uh, uh, you know your Halloween store, your local They'll Halloween store. Yeah. yeah, they should have them there. Make sure it's resin. And then go resin grab- Resin as opposed to like thin plastic. Resin as opposed Solid. to thin plastic. And you'll see why in a second. And then go grab some milk jugs, right? The, the gallon milk jugs, cut them out, put the gallon milk jug over the resin skull, get a heat gun and heat it up. You can form, and you can make your own plastic skulls that way. Oh, many um, of them. And then you can, yeah, tons of them, right? And then they're cheap and they're easy. Um, fun for the kids to help with as long as they don't burn themselves. And then you can paint them and do whatever you want. So if you're looking for a last minute, like, you know, uh, have you ever been through uh, Paris, the, uh, the uh, catacombs? with all the skulls in there. You could yeah. totally recreate that. Make a catacomb. Make kids. your own catacomb. It's fun. Um, Try it at home. And learn something in the process. You so. should do that outside, there though, because probably when those milk jugs melt, they uh, off gas some nasty They stuff. might a little bit. I should be fairly safe, actually, really? with that okay. plastic. Yeah, you should be okay. Nowadays, Just wear some gloves or something yeah. so you don't you know, burn your fingers and stuff. Last minute Halloween tip. You know, you could just go over to the makerspace. And you could. That. Where's Absolutely. your makerspace? It's in Benicia. Nice. BeniciaMakerspace.org. It's a good name. So, yeah. Um, I think uh, I think what should happen right now is Ron should, should, should throw us the mailbag. Oh, mailbag. from Dayton, Ohio. Thank you, sir. All the way from Dayton? All the way from Dayton. That's wow. a long throw. And now I have in my hand two questions. Pick one. You're going to answer them mm. both anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll pick the one closest to me. Because I think they're both for you. But let's start with email number one. I'm looking for a good tool, writes Edward. I can use, oh, there's more. I can use on Linux, specifically Fedora. Boy, that's a name I haven't heard. That was oh, the yeah, Red Hat, going. public yeah. version of Red Hat. That's right. That I can analyze my WLAN, WLAN, that's his wide area, local area network. I never understood why it would be wide and local, but that's yeah. okay. I'm looking for something that could potentially monitor the 2.4 gigahertz band. Oh, it's this wireless. Wireless, band, local not area wide network. area, yeah. wireless. Uh, if it's WAN, it's wide area. That's right. If it's WLAN, it's wireless. Uh, yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, he has a Linksys EA8300. He wants information on traffic and congestion. I'm having connection issues with my smart home cameras and hope to figure out what's going on. Well, I can tell you one thing. People forget. These home cameras, if they're streaming to the Internet, they use a ton of bandwidth. They do. Mm -hmm. If it's a high-def camera, it's like a megabit. And second. they don't have great antennas built in, right? A lot of them have that little tiny antenna. Some of them have external antennas. Right. A lot of them have that little tiny built-in antenna. You're not going to get the same kind of connection. You know, you have to be a lot closer to your router in order to get that fast connection. Oh, that's a good. A lot of times people will put them outside their house, for example, right. right? Makes sense, but you're going through your walls and all that kind of stuff back to your router. So what do you, uh, is there a Linux tool, uh, author of uh, Making with Linux? Yes. Is there a Linux tool to monitor bandwidth, so Wi-Fi bandwidth? All kinds of tools. It depends on how complicated you want to get, right? So back in the day, a lot of people used Wireshark. Uh, Wireshark was, I think, was bought by SolarWinds yeah. at some point. It changed the name. It changed the, no, it's still Wireshark. It's still Wireshark. Yeah, you okay. can still get Wireshark. If you want to run Wireshark, you can still get it. But there's a couple of alternatives that I would suggest. CloudShark is one. It runs in the cloud. You don't have to install as nice. much stuff. Uh, very similar, but it just runs in your browser, so I'd suggest that. And then there's the classic uh, Linux version of that, which is Ethereal. Um, That's what I was thinking of. Ethereal. Ethereal. Yeah. You can use that. And there's tons of tutorials online. So if you're not very technical, you can go read up on how to use it, sit, put that on your network, and then monitor your traffic that way. One last thing I would recommend, and I'm not sure, I didn't dig in to see if his router would support it. But what I do at home is I run DDWRT, which is an alternative firmware that you can run on some routers, not all of them. Uh, but if you do that, then you can you can download certain packages that will monitor your traffic and tell you, you know, which one is causing you problems and what the bandwidth is for each device. Um, so if this router supports it, I apologize, I didn't have time to look it up ahead of time. Uh, you might want to check out doing that if you're technically savvy. Some links this router certainly do. Yep. Um, modern router firmware is a lot better than it is. Days, and a lot yep. of it will do QoS and yep. give you bandwidth consumption of different devices, do yep. all sorts of stuff. And that may be enough in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your question. All right. 
This question says, uh, this is from Ryan. He says, hello, I'm an industrial design student at the University of Cincinnati. Go Bearcats. Uh, he's How, the, did you know that off the top of your head? Oh, well, yeah, I lived in Cincinnati for 20 oh, years. Okay. <laughs> go, get, go, get a, go get a cheese coney. Cheese uh, coney. Cheese yeah. coney or a three-way. You three like way it or a three-way or five-way? What do you like? I like a three-way. Three-way. I'm not much into the onions and the beans. Yeah, and I like five-way. Yeah. Does anyway. that include spaghetti? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Spaghetti, oh, yeah. chili, cheese. <laughs> Onions, that's good stuff. Onions, if you want, that's a four way. <laughs> What's uh, the fifth way? And the fi the fifth way beans? is with beans. So the beans. four way is actually onions or beans. beans. You get to pick. Yeah, yeah. And then the five way is everything. Whatever else. I yeah. made the mistake of getting the five way the first time I tried it, and I, I said I'm never eating this again. Whatever suits your compression. Several ratio, several years later, I was hooked. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's at the University of Cincinnati College of Design, Architecture, Art, and Planning. Very long title for that particular college. As his capstone progress project, he says, I want to build both software and hardware to make makerspaces easier to build and use. Wow. Right on. I'm currently focused mainly on 3D printing, but I want to propose a system that could be expanded to all aspects of creative spaces. I'm gathering information on current makerspaces to understand successes and opportunities. And if you have any helpful information, that would be much appreciated. Best, Ryan. So thank you, Ryan, for that question. And I'm so glad I'm here to talk about this because uh, we could be here a while. It's a good thing we've got the fire going. It's going oh, to get cold in here. Um, so a couple things come to mind with this. One is uh, that you could check out. There's a couple of projects that are going on right now that are actually great for makerspaces that you could get involved with and help um, uh, bring those projects either with documentation or additional coding or whatever. The first one is called Octoprint. And Octoprint allows you to connect to 3D printers remotely and do your printing you know, from somewhere else in the makerspace. You don't necessarily have to go over to the printer, put your card in, do that all, all that kind of stuff manually. You could, even if you wanted to, uh, you know, start your job from home, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because things can go wrong. Um, but Octoprint is a great project. And if there's a way, if you go out to Octoprint and look at what people are asking for in terms of additions to Octoprint to make them more usable, uh, my thing right now is how can I connect multiple printers to Octoprint? Because a lot of makerspaces have three or four printers, maybe of different varieties. It would be great to connect multiple printers to Octoprint to make them easier to use. Uh, that's one thing. Um, the other thing, yeah, along with 3D printers, of course, is a good slicing tool. Now, slicing... <laughs> Slicing says is... Says Freddy Krueger. What do you mean a <laughs> just, good slicing tool? Just in tool? time for Halloween. <laughs> uh, a slicing tool is a tool that you use to, once you get your model, uh, you put it in a slicer tool and it starts at the bottom of your model and says, what am I going to print on the first layer? And then what am I going to print on the second layer and so forth? And it builds that up uh, layer by layer. And that's a slicing tool. And you need that in order to print your project. Um, slicer, that's slicer with a three instead of an E, um, is a great project. And th it's all these are open source. And they could use some help. Uh, I'm sure they would love having your help uh, trying to get uh, 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 improvements into the slicer platform. There are lots of other slicers out there that you can use. Uh, MakerBot makes one, for example, for their printers. There's professional grade ones like Cura that you can pay a fee and use, and that's fine too. Um, but Slicer is an open source tool. It's free to the community. Um, they've done some great work. We use it in our makerspace. And so there's a couple projects there that I would, uh, I would suggest um, that you get involved with. And if you want something simpler, there's always camera mounts that you could design, build, and publish on Thingiverse to allow people to hook up cameras oh. to remotely monitor the print that's, that's in progress. Yeah. That would be a simpler one to do. Yeah. Um, but if there was a whole series of those for various camera types, webcams and so forth, that would be a great addition and something easy to do. I'm along sure these in the Benicia makerspace you have lots of different 3D printers. Have you found this is something I get asked all the time and I, it's a, it's a it's such a fast moving area. Have you found some that are are good? Yes. Reliable and affordable. Yeah, the Prusa 3D. P R P R U S A. R U S A. 3D is the one that I typically recommend. How now, much? Uh, I believe they're three or four hundred dollars. That's a good price. Yeah, you can get them on you Amazon. You can get printers for 129 bucks. Absolutely, I, I wouldn't mess. I wouldn't with recommend it. it. Yeah, yeah the, get something that's going to last a while. The nice thing about the Prusa is it's upgradable. When they come out with new versions, new uh, new additions to things, you can actually they usually allow you to upgrade yourself. This would be a good gift great. for a hobbyist. Perfect gift for a hobbyist yeah. as we're coming up on the holiday season or birthday or whatever. 
Uh, we have several makers at our makerspace that use these. Um, you can see the uh, the cheapest one there, I think, is around $300. Yeah, that's the original Prusa 13. The original, yep. And they're a little bit more expensive, but well worth it. The design quality or the print quality on these is excellent, um, rivaling anything that you would see from MakerBot or any, any place else. So. One of the things I've been told is that the less expensive printers are require a lot of attention and constant mm -hmm. adjustment. They like do. You have to recalibrate every single yep. print job. Yeah. In fact, we have a class. Uh, before we let people use our 3D printers, they have to go through this two-hour class for that very reason, because things go wrong. Yeah. And you have to know what you're doing. The last thing you want to have happen is your, you know, your head to get stuck on a print or something and start a fire or melt plastic. Oh, or, my God. Yeah, vent, vent gases or anything like that. So okay. um, you do kind of have to babysit them a little bit. Prusa. Yep. You know, this is the guy, right? He's the author of Make Linux for Makers from uh, the makezine.com, folks. Uh, uh, highly recommended for anybody, especially if you're getting a Raspberry Pi for a young person mm -hmm. in your family. They're only 35 bucks, and you're going to need some support. I also really love the uh, Learn to Program Python oh, yeah, that's with a, a Raspberry one. Pi. That's There's a another one that's uh, Getting Started with Raspberry Pi yeah. uh, by... Um uh, shoot, Richardson, uh, Matt, right? Matt Richardson. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, yeah. It wrote that one. It's a great. So I would, I would get all three. Yeah. Um, or get the ebooks if you want to. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Put them on your phone. And what a uh, just a great gift for a kid who's interested in technology. Yeah. Hey, uh, Williams in the audience. He is with, of course, the fabulous. Who can ever forget it? RBR uh, Wrestling Podcast. Oh yeah, I listen to it all. Just the time. love that show. And he tells us that according to The Verge, Google has said even though they're renaming YouTube, uh, Google Music to YouTube mm -hmm. Music, they will still let you upload and store your music with that's YouTube great. Music. So that's, that's very good news. And thank awesome. you, uh, William. Yeah. I just gave him the 2008 Podcast of the Year Award. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because he deserves it. Did you say 2008? Well, he's been doing it for 13 years. <laughs> I had to pick a number and... <laughs> and I had that one lying around, so. That's awesome. There he goes. <laughs> Thank you, William. Thank you. Look, we had a great studio audience. Thanks to yeah. all of you. If you want to join us, uh, we do this show in Petaluma, California. If you're up our way, and you know you should come up. There's beer, there's wine. There's great food. Italian food. Oh. Uh, just send an email to tickets at twit.tv mm -hmm. so we can make sure we have a seat for you. Email tickets at twit.tv. You can also watch our live stream. We do the show Saturdays around about 3 Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's at least for another week, 2200 UTC, and then we're going to fall back and confuse everybody. You can go to twit.tv slash live. That's where the stream is. And if you do watch the stream, you should really be in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. That's all 12 people that are watching the stream. They're all in that <laughs> chat room chatting with one another. It's a small but cozy community. You can also get on-demand versions of uh, this show. A few more people do it that way. If you go to twit.tv slash NSS, every episode's there. You can also go to twit.tv slash subscribe subscribe to learn how to subscribe but if you already have a podcast application you use Pocket Cast or Overcast or Google or Apple or whatever just use that mm -hmm. and subscribe to the new screensavers that way you'll get it the minute it's available I'm assuming it's available on Google Home Hub as well it is I didn't try that <laughs> but I should have yeah uh, yeah you could. that's actually uh, to me this is going to be a revolutionary uh, thing for podcasters the ability to ask your voice assistant whether it's Echo or Google or Siri or mm -hmm. Cortana, if somebody has one of those, um, to play, say, let's uh, listen, you know, play the new Screensavers podcast. I always had the word podcast. That usually works. Yeah. And then you can listen to the latest episode very easily. Easily, yeah. I think that's going to be a revolution for yep. podcasts. Great for way, while you're cleaning the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Go to Whatever time. way, listen or watch, but do come back next week. We'll see you then. And thank you, Aaron Newcomb. You bet. Benicia Makerspace. Benicia Makerspace dot org. org. Because, as Aaron well knows, it's non-profit. That's right. All right. See you next time on the new Screensavers. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.